Mr. Majeri, Avidi Tags, Kreso Ikoi Glanans. Hello, my name is Jerry, Mr. Tags, and welcome to Koi Glanans. In this episode, we're focusing on building a suspension bridge across our ravine. Welcome back to Coy Glanant. Just want to show you our uh, current project. We have a ravine over here, which uh, is quite deep. I don't know, it's perhaps uh, 25 feet deep. And um, over there is about 13 meters wide. And this green string line is the, uh, the area where we're going to put in a bridge. Because of the width of this and the logistics, the suspension bridge is actually the way forward. Originally I had a plan to build from this bank into the fork of that tree there. That was going to be the, the two supports for the other side of the suspension bridge. And then I was going to have a fixed bridge, the short section over to the bank. But I uh, realise now that the, the history of that tree is, uh, is more valuable. It is a um, birch tree. They don't live to be particularly old, the silver birch. Uh, it's dying, it's well past its prime as far as the tree is concerned, but in the ecological sense it's very valuable because it supports a whole host of life. And so for those reasons we're not going to put the suspension bridge there. The suspension bridge goes past. We'll take that angle so you'll be able to see the tree good and close. <clears throat> Where we're up to at the moment is I've dug that hole and I've started to dig that one. And they're going to form the two uprights for this side of the bridge. And uh, one and a half metres uh, further in is going to be where the anchor pins for the cabling go. This is classic suspension bridge. It's uh, two 12mm uh, steel wires that are going to form the, the deck. And another two 12mm steel wires that will be a metre up on these two upright posts and that's going to form the uh, the uprights and then there'll be a lacing of smaller wire that stitches it all together and then boards and uh, exactly the same over the other side so these holes are a metre deep uh, or that one is, that one's not uh, I need to dig four at this end and I need to dig four at the other end uh, just to take the weight, the weight of it so uh, no mean feat for me at <laughs> today's task um, we'll see how we get on with it never built a bridge before and if you're going to build one, why not build a big one? This is from this post here, that post hole, to where the next post will be on the other side is exactly 14 metres. The anchor pins, 1.5 metres back from the, the main uprights, uh, give the bridge a span of 17 metres. Although in reality, from the dropping off the edge of the ravine to picking it up on the other side is about 12. Um, but there's no, no good putting a bridge very on the edge of the ravine, it'll just fall in. So uh, yeah, seven meter, 17 metre bridge. So that's the weekend's task. Uh, it's probably going to take me a week to do this. It seems to be taking me quite a long time just to dig the holes. So um, I'll post again as we get closer through it. Day two of uh, the Coid Glanant suspension bridge. So we managed to get two posts in. These are surprisingly difficult. Um, mainly because, because of the weight they carry, they're in the ground by about a metre and uh, obviously we get stones in the ground at a metre and, uh, and before that as well and it's very difficult to get them out at that depth. There's where the bridge is going to go over to, um, that's the gateway and uh, behind there we need to put the an ground anchor pins in and the same with, uh, with these ones. So we need to now get a straight edge, a straight string line and line up those posts there and I can project back and work out exactly where the ground anchor is going to go and that's going to be another hole about a metre deep inclined back at about 16 degrees which will take the cable from here across, straight across and then from here up through a hole at the top of that post through a hole at the top of that post over there and then back down to the anchor and the same on the other side and um, that's the, the basis of the suspension bridge. Um, it's taken us a lot longer than I expected, mainly because of the stones in the holes, unfortunately. So, um, and there's no, oops, there's no ways around that. Uh, so, 
Yeah, I'm just going to have to dig again. But um, I doubt that we'll get the two anchor holes on either side uh, finished by the end of today. And logistically, uh, I think we need about a hundred kilos of, uh, of concrete over over there, and that's very difficult to get to. That's a hard work job just in its own right. Um, we'll see how we get on though. So here we are back at Coy Glanand, and we're day three of our bridge construction. So uh, we didn't make as much progress as we expected uh, yesterday, really because of the stones in the in the soil. Uh, some quite big stones and we're down at a fair depth. We're down nearly a metre in these holes and uh, a little bit of water in that one. The problem we've got with, with stones is we need to dig a slightly bigger hole in order to get the stones out. It's become really really hard work and uh, the bigger hole means that we need to put more concrete in and so where we thought we had 100 kilos of concrete on each side and we're talking probably now about 120 so I'm going to have to buy some more bags which is a bit of a nuisance. Um, but nevertheless we crack on so this is our plan and this is where some maths and accuracy needs to come into this these two poles bizarrely they're in the ground by the same amount uh, but the ground is sloping and so we're using a laser level we've uh, defined our height on the let me just make that out that's our, uh, that's our height that's where the handrail lines are going to go through and the same on, on that one Essentially, I'll just cut that post off and uh, trim it down. So the handrail line is going to come from there. The uh, the deck rail lines are going on the string line there. We've marked the posts uh, for that. And then at our holes, our plan here is to fill this hole with concrete. And then we need to make a, uh, a an area that's flat for the eye bolt to bolt through. And the only way we can think to do this to, to go from this round hole to a, uh, an area where an eye bolt will fasten onto is to use five gallon drums. Now how this is going to work, let me just show you, is we've got some five gallon containers. The top of it is cut out where we can pour concrete in, the bottom of it is completely open where that's going to seal on top of the, uh, uh, the concrete peg or nail and we can put some clay on it to stop anything spilling out. We're going to put these, this is just a 215 mil wastewater type pipe, that's going to go through there and be taped on uh, either side to try and give that box some structure and rigidity and that's so that this eye bolt can go through and the washers can sit neatly because I can't think for how else we're going to do that. Into this we're going to poke in uh, four rebars that are going to go all the way through the bottom which will tie that uh, top piece in with the whole structure. And uh, that's, that's basically it. We've defined the levels. Uh, we're going to work off the laser level, working back onto this. And um, Tags at the moment is building a fire. The, uh, the idea of the fire is that we can heat up a piece of copper pipe. Just a bit of scrap copper pipe. That is going to burn the holes through the plastic oil drums that we can then put the pipe through and seal it. And uh, it seems really straightforward. But um, because we're involved, nothing is ever straightforward. So... Uh, Later on today, we'll see how we get on. Okay, this is what we've done so far, and this is, uh, like everything else, taken us longer than we expected. We filled the holes with concrete. We put four pins in as reinforcing bar, and we've actually used fence pins because uh, not only are they the right thickness for that, um, they're reasonably inexpensive, and also. They gave a structural support around the, those tubes that are there. Now the idea with these tubes is after about 24 hours we'll be able to wiggle them and turn them out. And that will give us a tube through the concrete which we can then put the thread bar through with the eye bolt on. And so these are set, and whilst they don't look like they're particularly accurate, they are, uh, they are reasonably accurate. We've measured them with a with a wing and a prayer, you know, with a lick of the finger, and it seems pretty close to me. So this this line, that's the post of the, the wire that's going to come from there up to the centre of the post there, travel across to the next one, and that forms the handrail. And the inner one is the main deck wire travelling across to the other side. 
So that's a metre of concrete into the ground. So we're fairly sure that's a pretty substantial anchor. And all the uh, plastic container is doing is allowing us a flat surface to uh, and allow us a transition from the round hole that we dug into a flat surface where the thread bar can fault to. And that one's exactly the same. And whilst they look really, really odd, the ground slopes. So we've dug the holes at a metre, each one is a metre. Of course, this one sticks out by, by that much because that's just the fall of the ground. It is a bit of an optical illusion, but we have uh, verified it. We've got a laser level. We've set our levels here. Here is our level. And this is with our metre stick. And then coming up from here, where our bolts are going to come off, and there you can see the laser level on the mark. Burn the camera out there. So what would we three millimeters out? Yeah. Two millimeters. That's pretty close for me. It is a, a crude affair at the best of times. So all we've got to do now is I re replicate this on the other side. The only problem is we know for sure that we've got to get 100 kilos of um, material over there because that's what we've used in these holes. And so our focus is now to set up a materially in traverse across there because. Whilst it's not very far in distance, it's only in fact 14 metres post to post. It's a hell of a long walk to go all the way around. So if we use one of these trees here, we can set up a tyrolean lean traverse from the trees behind us, swinging across there, using the turf a winch, put a pulley on it, and hopefully send the buckets of uh, concrete over there. And we'll get that job nailed off pretty quickly because we've now worked out what we need to do. So. Give us another hour and hopefully we'll have done that end as well. Cheers! So it's now three o'clock and we've got a uh, we've got a plan. We have a Tivoli in traverse. We have a strap tied to a tree, turf a winch, wire going over there. It's just resting on the top of that post as it happens. Uh, I know that in time that post will be strong enough to carry a Tivoli in all on its own. But the reality of it is, we only poured the concrete in there yesterday, and um, I'd rather let it set for a little bit. So we're using the tree, takes us over there, uh, with the other end of the wire on another tree. We've got the buckets, with all the stuff, and impressively, everything's going to go over there. Pull away then, tags. Well, and it does. It does work. Having said that, there's a tree that it may get stuck on, but I'm sure we can pull it past that. Now that has saved us a massive amount of effort and energy. That is a good invention. Oh, it's gone underneath there, perfect. That is fantastic. God, brilliant, cool. So here we are, back at Coid Glanant, uh, looking at the bridge again. This is the end of day four, although in reality, it's, uh, we haven't done any work today. What we've done today is come along and look at the, the concrete anchor points that are going to uh, support our wires. And we'd cast these concrete points in uh, five gallon containers. The base cut out of the five gallon container and the container put basically on a round post hole and the purpose of that was to be able to convert a round nail for want of a better word into a square top where the bolts could go through and that's exactly what we've done and it's worked really really well the concrete is by no means near set but um, we pulled the, the plastic off and critically we pulled the plastic pipes out that formed these tubes because they would have fused in there and it had to be done whilst the concrete was in the softest posi ish, uh, p position and that's what we've done. Um, we were thinking about cleaning that up a little bit but there's no need. By the time there's some soil covers over that, that's, uh, that's pretty good. We are very, very impressed with that. The other one is slightly lower down I and mean, it's the same idea but because of the, um, the way the land was, part of the plastic is trapped in but that's not an issue. It's exactly the same arrangement. And on the other side of the ravine, the, the same thing is, is there. We're, we're very, very pleased with this. Um, and there's four rebar in here, which go down a metre. This is the top 
of a meter nail into the ground. So uh, I don't think this is going anywhere. So a couple more days curing and we'll start fitting the wires on this and see where we go. So here we are back at Coy Glanant. Uh, I think this is day four of our big bridge construction. We've got into a position now where we've got the wire, we've got the posts drilled, we've got our concrete blocks are in and substantial and have set. Uh, so that's our main anchorage. We've got our post, we've got the first wire going through, we've got our cable drum feeding out and the plan is to feed out to the far side. So we're going to pull that wire over there, feed it through the post, sleeve it, fold it, attach it to the uh, concrete block and then come back to this end, uh, cut it and tension it. And then once we've got that one in, we can use that as a traverse line to assist with pulling the other three cables over. And um, from that point, after that, we put the, the plank boards on. We're pretty close. We're bridging the making. First wire in. Post, anchorages, first wire clamped through the post. Just need to take the tension up over there. And then three more to go. So we've got the wire anchored in at the far end. Over there, running through the post. That's all working well. We've got a prussuk tied on the wire there. We've got a ratchet strap acting as the tensioner, which gives us our free end. That clamp was there really to stop the, uh, the line from wire from feeding itself back into the ravine. And that gives us the free end now that we can cut this, turn it over, uh, clamp it into the bottle screw and uh, take that tensioner away. And that is one of them done. Seemingly much easier than we expected. That generally means that something might, might go wrong. The first two wires, the handrails, have gone in surprisingly easy, which is always onimous. This is the, the first of the deck rails going over. It's exactly the same plan, only they're not actually running through the posts. Uh, they're just running along the bottom. And then the same tensioner arrangement is going to connect into there. Oh, slow that down. Cool. So here we are at the start of day five, I think. I forget. It seems to be so many days. It's, uh, it has been quite a lengthy project. Not the wires, that was very easy yesterday, or relatively, uh, but the posts were quite laborious. Anyway, this was the end of yesterday. We have all the wires in, all the way through. We've got a reasonable amount of tension on. We've got the anchors in at the far side, fixed, and the anchorage in this side, adjustable. We've taken the tension over and locked it all. And we've put some pieces of wood in, these were just, uh, actually it was part of an, an old bridge that collapsed and that just provides a little bit of a, um, a riser just to keep the wire off the ground and make sure that the first planks don't touch the ground and uh, actually what I've got to do there is dig that bit of soil away so that there's a space underneath and similarly on the other side. But here we are, this is the start of our work today from this, we need to put the planks in and then the link wires between the deck and the handrail and away we go. It all looks really fa fairly simple. There are 50 planks to drop in um, and there's about 80 meters of zigzaggy wire to go on each side. Our first priority is planks. So here we have 17 standard scaffold planks 3.9 metres long. Uh, they'll be cut in three, which will give us about uh, 51 planks that are 1.3 metres each. The spacing on the wires is one metre. That will give us uh, an overhang on each side of 15 centimetres. So that's our plan. So 50 planks cut down, and then each one is to be drilled with a single bolt. And we've got these marked as inny and outy. That's the outer one. And the reason for this is because of our wire spacing and our bolt hole going through. 
Alternatively, alternatively, each plank will be bolted outside of the wire or inside of the wire. And that will uh, hold the wire true so that if there was ever any issue, the wire doesn't move out to one side and all the planks drop in because it's immediately retained by the next plank. So my focus now is with the chainsaw because that is the ultimate tool for cutting is to cut straight through those and convert them into smaller lengths and then drill and then pass along towards the bridge and fit them on and uh, at that point we can zigzag it up and away we go so the board fixings are staggered alternatively one bolt on the outside of the wire one bolt on the inside and that gives us a degree of safety and prevents the wire from splaying and the edges of the boards all dropping, dropping in because the boards are only retained by those bolts. On the underside of those bolts we're using a really simple system. This is just a wood joining washer. This is a bolt through one on the inner of the wire, one on the outer of the wire and then basically just being clamped and sandwiched underneath these bolts. It seemed much more logical to just clamp the wire that way than it would have been to screw on a wooden batten or two wooden battens or put a U-bolt on or to weaken the board by routering a uh, groove in there and then use a U-bolt. These U-bolts are, are actually really quite expensive and when you work out how many that's needed, we needed a, a, an efficient, quick, simple, cost-effective solution and surprisingly these washers work really well. They have enough of a spacing to be able to grip the 12 mil wire. They are um, about 14 mil spacing, I think, or 12 mil spacing. Uh, we're using M8 bolts, and so we're using an M8 washer over the top, and that's just giving us that clamping ability to trap the wire underneath. And so far, it's working really, really well. I have a section of video missing, uh, and I'm sorry about that. It's either missing or I f actually forgot to record it. Uh, one of the two, I can't remember. Anyway, it is a critical part. It's the linking between the deck and the handrail because the, uh, the weight of the scaffold boards fastened to the deck was about 440 kilos, and that caused the, uh, the deck to, uh, to sag uh, considerably lower than the handrail. And so uh, for the rigidity of the bridge and the, uh, the complete structure, those two needs to be laced together. And so how this was achieved was uh, to look firstly at the center point of the bridge. And because we'd put down 51 planks, we could actually count that as being plank 26. Uh, just for the maths there, we, uh, we, we measured this, the span of the bridge between the posts. We knew the, uh, the width of the planks, we multiplied that the amount that we had on the planks, divided that by the, the space that we had. That gave us the, the free area, the bit left over. We then divided that by the amount of planks. That gave us the gap that was going to go in between, which for us was um, just shy of 50 millimetres. Um, so we used a spacer between the planks to, uh, to create that. Anyway, at the centre plank, uh, number 26, uh, we marked on the handrail where, where that was and uh, from there we started to attach the, the linking uh, stiffening wires. Now these wires were six millimetres. They uh, had ordered about 80 metres of wire based upon some basic maths of the amount of triangles that I thought that I would need in order to zip this up. Uh, how we achieved that was uh, I ordered 80 metres of wire we spooled the wire out, uh, marked the centre point, and then uh, given us two halves, we marked the centre point of those. So we have a, a wire for each side of the bridge with its centre point marked. We clamped the centre point of the link wires, the 6 mil wires, with the centre point of the handrail of the bridge. We then used strap wrench at the centre point of the bridge, and the strap wrench pulled the, the, uh, the handrail down and the deck up, until the wires were parallel at that point. Now that's best done with a stick with a, uh, with a mark on it 
and you need to set the height of the deck level with the height of the handrail. So the, the rail wire came off the post to exactly a metre spacing. So taking the 38 millimetre thickness of the board off, uh, we marked our posts at uh, 962 um, millimetres, and that's where the handrail should have been. So strap wrench uh, on either side of the bridge at the centre point pulled the bridge up. Now, logically, you could not start this zipping up of the bridge from one end. It had to be done from the centre. So the first thing was that working from the handrail, the wire was clamped, and then wires were taken down either side. Uh, in this case, we started with uh, covering three planks. Wires were clamped then, and strap wrenches moved, uh, adding strap wrenches now, and working further out from the centre point back to the support posts. Tightened up with a strap wrench until we'd got the mark on our, uh, our marker stick of a metre, or a 960 working off the top side of the plank, we could then uh, clamp the next set of wires down. Now 51 planks uh, gave us, um, taking the first three out of the centre, 24 boards either side of the centre, and uh, dividing that up by uh, four gave us five triangles. And so that's essentially what happened. Working out from the centre, the, the the deck and the handrail were pulled together to form a meter and then triangles were created clamping the wire the link wire between the deck and the handrail uh, over every four boards and then this but was uh, finished off uh, at the handrail with the final clamp and it was a relatively straight procedure and once that was done the bridge gained the stiffening that it didn't have before uh, because obviously once we just had it once we had a deck that deck could move up and down and side to side once the uh, link wires were uh, stitched and clamped in, we had a stability because we essentially formed a cradle and uh, it was very noticeable at that point. And I'm sorry I wasn't able to uh, video that particular part of the process, but uh, as you'll see, it's, it wasn't a particularly difficult part. Strap wrenches worked uh, really perfectly for that job, linking the two wires and just ratchet up, pull the two together, mark it, uh, clamp it, move it on. It was really as simple as that. So here we are with the finished bridge. We've decided to add these supports to keep the wires parallel from the point that they passed the uprights. What we noticed was that the wire, the main deck wire, was sagging from the anchor point and um, it made sense to lift that up. So that was done. We painted the deck boards were scaffold boards that were, we thought they were pressure treated but we weren't sure uh, so we took them off um, to avoid spilling paint in the ravine we've painted them and here we go it's a very strange thing suspension bridge it seems like some of the wires are loose and then as you walk on them the tension is shifted constantly between the deck and the handrail and some wires become loose and some take weight as you go along. And there we are. Same anchorage as at the, the other side, only without the tensioners. All told, that represents about five solid days work I think and about 800 pounds in money all we've left to do now really is just to landscape this area put some stone down reduce some of the mud a little bit job done <laughs>